All right, guys, here you go. Classic Accessories Colorado XTS. This is an awesome little fishing machine, and we've done some amazing tweaks to it thanks to some videos off of YouTube uh, and a little bit ingenuity as well. My buddy Glenn and I, we did a great job on this boat. The problem that I had with it before was when I was using the trolling motor was the tiller handle was really awkward to use. So doing the speed and, and steering was just not pleasant to do. So we fixed that. We've um, pulled the uh, tiller head off. I love how the steering works. So this whole idea of the steering is basically working on the principle that whatever direction I, I swivel my chair is the direction that the motor will turn. So I'll try and point down here, see if I can get an angle for you. So as we're doing this, you can see we're swiveling and it's working fully off of the uh, seat motion here. And again, this is really inexpensive to do. This was done with uh, some paracord. Uh, four carabiners and a couple of eye bolts that I bought at, um, at Home Depot and then I just put a, a jam nut on it here. This is a, um, a pipe fitting that's meant to hold pipes in place. It has a 3 8 coarse uh, thread nut already part of the body and uh, so when we thread that in all I did is put a little bit of uh, blue Loctite. Don't use the red stuff or you'll have a really bad day trying to get that off. And then what we've done a super simple fix here after we take the uh, tiller head uh, off here is I just used a rubber cap that you put on the bottom of a chair um, and it worked really well I drilled out a hole for the wires the yellow and the white wire I just simply stuffed back into the tube and the red and the black had pulled out I've siliconed the daylights out of it so that it's watertight and then I've got um, some really good gauge wire going through the loom here uh, and I've siliconed this as well so that it doesn't fill up with water. And it comes down. And then what we've got are the quick connects. So the quick connects, so when I get out to the water, I just do a quick connect. It's important you don't get those backwards or you'll have a really bad day. So motor, and this is the power. And then what I did is I've also run my lead and I have a uh, 50 amp circuit breaker that I run uh, off of the, the hot terminal and that'll just give you some uh, circuit protection. So we just pop that off. And the good thing is, is that what I love about these and super inexpensive um, and it, you don't have to worry about carrying spare fuses. If you pop a fuse, you just literally reset the breaker, just, just like a breaker at home. Uh, so you're not having to replace parts all the time. And there'd be nothing worse than forgetting to have a spare one in your boat and it pops when you're out on the water and now you're having to row. And we come down here and here's how we run the motor. This is your uh, speed and direction. Now in the very middle there you'll see that I've got um, a display. I have to still glue the um, LED that goes in place that tells me what percent the motor is running at. So 30%, 100%, whatever. And right here, we're gonna cut out and we're gonna put a, uh, a voltage meter to tell us as far as what is left on the battery. So we know when we're out there, we go, okay, we've only got 30% left, let's head back. In the video description, I'll put the link where I got this box here. Works really well for, um, for doing uh, watertight. And then I, I silicone everything anyhow, uh, but just make sure you don't get any water in there. Uh, same with the switch, I bought that on Amazon as well. I'll put the link below, turn it on for you. Okay, here we go. So we can dial this in as slow as we want. And props barely moving. All the way up to full. Now this is the Minn Kota, it's the C2. It's um, the 30 pound thrust. So we don't need to have a huge amount of uh, power with this. And then I can switch it to reverse. And now we can go reverse and the same thing. I can control the speed as fast as I want it to go or slow as I want it to go. Uh, so yeah, it, this system is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I had this boat out on the lake uh, last fall 
and I was trying to use the uh, tiller and it was just uh, just a real pain. It was just awkward to do, even though you swivel your seat, um, you know, you're kind of facing diagonally. It was hard to have what I call good control to know where you're going. Um, this just really, really works well. Uh, gets you so your hands free for steering. You're not having to worry about that when you're fighting a fish. Where the fish goes, you just swivel your chair and you follow them. You'll see we got an extra Scotty mount. This one is either going to be for a rod. I think it's probably going to be though where I'm going to put uh, my GoPro. I'm not sure yet. I might put a second rod holder there just like I did on this one just to get my rod up out of the way. And then down on the handlebar here, I think I'll mount the other one and it'll come out and up and I'll put the, uh, the GoPro on a uh, little uh, uh, monopod idea. I also bought off of Amazon this plastic here, which works really, really well for lining this grate. Um, this, uh, the problem with this unit here is that these holes are way too big. So you can't store anything of any, you know, small size back here. It's going to fall in the water. Uh, and so what I've done is I've lined it, punched some holes, zap strapped it. You can see that there's silicone on it right now. It's still in the process of drying. That will dry clear, so it'll be invisible. And that's going to stop anything from rolling out through the little corner gaps. We have actually set this rig up with a nice little Scotty mount downrigger and it works awesome. So what I've done is a 24 ounce lead ball and you can see there's a line counter there that I got off of Amazon as well. I've used a little hose clamp here just to keep the, uh, the cable in line. It's not so tight that it's abrading, it's not causing any problems, it's not restricting the flow. It keeps it in perfect alignment so that we can count the depth when we're dropping it down. And we got our hummingbird, fish finder, sonar, depth finder, whatever you want to call it. Now again, um, this boat on its own is a great little boat, I can't say enough about it. Classic Accessories has done an absolutely uh, great uh, job on um, building this the unit and then we just simply perfected it. Glenn Larson, big shout out to you, thanks buddy for all your help. Um, Glenn's a millwright so did some great fabricating for me and uh, yeah, it looks really good. We're set to go fishing. And any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I will put in the video description all the links to the products that I used on Amazon for you. So you can easily buy them and uh, set yourself up with this as well. It's an easy project, relatively speaking, to do. Well worth it to do. And if you like this video, click like. Please don't forget to subscribe. And while you're at it, click that reminder bell so you don't miss any future notifications. I thank you guys very much and we'll catch you next time. Tight lines.